Organic Rankine Cycle, or ORC. A Rankine Cycle is a system that uses fuel to produce heat from a heat source, converting a fluid into steam, which then expands through a turbine producing useful energy. ORC working principle is similar to the Clausius Rankine Cycle for power generation. The main difference is that ORC uses organic substances such as hydrocarbons or refrigerants as working fluid instead of water or steam. It converts low temperature heat sources into a mechanical energy to produce electrical power in a closed system. The heat sources can be harnessed from renewable energy such as geothermal, solar, or biomass. There are two classifications of the ORC system, namely a heat recovery system and binary power plant. ORC can be applied in geothermal power plants where the heat sources are between 90 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius. On this presentation, isobutane with a chemical formula of C4H10 is used as the organic working fluid. It has a lower boiling point of only minus 11.7 degrees Celsius and a higher vapor pressure than water. Due to its low boiling point, Isobutane is able to utilize low temperature geothermal heat sources to convert itself from liquid to gaseous vapor. Now let's talk about the binary cycle power plant system. It is a system that operates on two fluids, thus the name binary. The first fluid is a heat source with low temperatures from 90 to 150 degrees Celsius, in this case a geothermal fluid. The second fluid is the working fluid which is an organic substance with a low boiling point such as isobutane. The working fluid is vaporized in a heat exchanger to turn a turbine. The geothermal fluid and the working fluid are confined in two separate closed loops. Heat exchangers are used to transfer the heat energy from the geothermal fluid to the working fluid using a Rankine cycle better known as Kalina cycle. The secondary fluid will then vaporize into gaseous vapor and the force of the expanding vapor turns the turbine. The turbine is coupled to a generator to produce electricity. These are the major components of a binary power plant using the ORC system. First is the geothermal production well, where it serves as a conduit of hot fluids from the geothermal source of 110 degrees Celsius to the preheater. Next is the preheater, which initially boils the incoming liquid isobutane to a partially gaseous vapor using heat coming from ge geothermal hot fluids. Next is the evaporator, where further boiling and heating is applied to the partially gaseous isobutane vapor using the 80 degrees Celsius heat from the geothermal fluid. Note that the isobutane will start to boil at only minus 11.7 degrees Celsius. Farther on to the binary cycle is the turbine and generator. I personally call them the power do. Isobutane vapor enters a turbine inlet and turns the turbine to produce electricity at the generator. Next is the condenser and cooling tower. I call them the liquefiers. Low pressure isobutane gas enters the condenser and exits as a liquid. What makes it liquid is because of the cooling tower. I'll explain more on the succeeding slides. Moving forward is the liquid pump, which transfers the liquid isobutane to the preheater and the cycle starts again. To complete the binary system, it ends up when the geothermal fluid exits the evaporator and re-injected back to the substrata or back to the rock formation via a re-injection well. Now let's get into more details of the major components of the binary power plant using the ORC system. First stop is the geothermal production well. Geologists 
pick a right spot to drill a production well based on pressures and temperatures that are potential to become a geothermal reservoir. The production well conducts geothermal fluid from the reservoir to the surface. It has a set of casings made of carbon steel pipes set and cemented inside the drilled hole. The conductor pipe is driven or hammered to the ground down to 45 meters to protect the well from loose near-surface unconsolidated soil and rocks from entering the well bore, also to prevent the infiltration of groundwater and rainwater into the well. Next is a surface casing which isolates the freshwater aquifers. It is cemented in place and provides protection in case of a well blowout. It also provides structural strength for the succeeding casings to be installed. Setting depths could vary about 800 meters. Next is the production casing which is run and cemented and is set right on top of the producing zones. Nevertheless, it isolates troublesome formations or fluids to get into the well. Setting depths could vary around a thousand meters. Next are the perforated liners, which are carbon steel pipes with hollow or slotted holes punched on them. They are hung at the end of the production casing and do not extend the, to the surface. They are purposely slotted in order for the geothermal fluids to pass through. Once the casings and liners are installed, the CHF or casing head flange is welded on top of the casings and the master valve is installed to open and close the well. The depth of the well is around 1,200 meters. The magma chamber produces heat and the heat flows upwards to heat up the rocks and formations above it by conductive flow. The heat continues to rise due to pressure and heats up any liquid or water along its way. This hot liquids or water, also called geothermal fluids, are channeled through cracks and fissures at the rock formation, thereby creating a geothermal reservoir. Hot geothermal fluids at 110 degrees Celsius enters the well through the perforated liners. Due to pressure, the fluids rise to the top and is directed to the preheater. Next is the preheater, which is a heat exchanger where the heat coming from the geothermal fluids is absorbed by the incoming liquid isobutane. The liquid isobutane boils and turns into partially gaseous vapor. The geothermal fluid exits the preheater at a lower temperature of 80 degrees Celsius. Next is the evaporator which is also a heat exchanger, where the geothermal fluid continues to boil the partially gaseous vapor into 100% vapor. The geothermal fluid exits the evaporator at a lower temperature of around 60 degrees Celsius. Next is the turbine generator tandem, aka the power do. Isobutane gaseous vapor enters the turbine and the force of the expanding gas spins the turbine blades. The low pressure gas exits the turbine. The turbine shaft is coupled to the generator and produces electricity. Next is the condenser and cooling tower. I call them the liquefiers. The condenser is also a heat exchanger. Low pressure gaseous vapor exiting the turbine enters the condenser. Isobutane gas is then cooled by the cold water coming out from the cooling tower. The isobutane gas exits the condenser as liquid. The cold water from the cooling tower enters the condenser to cool the isobutane gas and the water exits the condenser at warm conditions. The warm water enters the cooling tower at the top and is sprayed 
while dropping down the tower. The ambient atmospheric air cools the sprayed warm water and collected at the sump at atmospheric conditions and temperature. Moving forward is the liquid pump which transfers the liquid isobutane back to the preheater and the secondary fluid cycle starts again. To complete the binary process, the warm geothermal water fluid exiting the evaporator is injected back to the substrata or back to the formation at the depth of a thousand meters via a reinjection well. The reinjection well is drilled in an area farther away from a production well, farther away from a geothermal reservoir. The location of the reinjection well must contain permeable rocks to accept the reinjected geothermal water. The reinjection well has the same casing strings configuration with the production well. Strictly saying, there must be no underground link between the reinjection well and the production well, otherwise, the reinjected water will cool down the production well and cools down the geothermal reservoir, thus reducing the production well's output. The ORC system or the organic Rankine cycle system has proven beyond reasonable doubt that it can produce electricity even from heat sources with low temperatures such as from combustion of biomass, from industrial wasted heat, and from geothermal heat sources, which is our example here, at low temperatures in a binary power plant. Notwithstanding, the organic Rankine cycle system also provides significant environmental benefits, namely, it eliminates the use of fossil fuels to produce electricity. Second, it has zero harmful toxic discharges because it is a closed loop system. Last but not the least, it has zero carbon emissions because there is no burning of fuels. Thank you very much for watching and kindly hit subscribe.